Hello and welcome to an OET reading lesson. This time we're focusing on practice questions for part B and I'm going to show you some guided answers as well. We're going to do a quick recap in this lesson of what part B consists of. Then we're going to give you some timed questions and of course show you how you get the answers. As I mentioned, this is just a practice session today. Um, if you do want more help with how you find the answers and building those skills, then please take a look at my reading playlist. I've put a link up for you. You should see that appearing sometime soon. And that goes into much more detail about how you actually find the answers. But I know so many of you just want to practice. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to give you some part B questions. I'm going to time you and then let you get on with it really and then show you the answers. My name's Sona, I'm your online OET tutor with Bose Learning and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. Okay so just a quick recap before we start, remember in the OET reading part B you're going to get six short texts to read. These texts come with a question and each question has three multiple choice answer options. These could be in the form of a sentence stem or a question and then you get three possibilities coming up and the whole thing is combined with part C and for both of these things you get 45 minutes. This means that I recommend you spend no longer than 12 minutes on part B. So six texts to go through and answer, six questions, I suggest that you spend two minutes on each one. So I'm going to time you and give you two minutes per text. Once you've gone through all of those, we'll then go over the answers and why the other options are wrong. That's always quite useful to do. So. For now, just get yourself a pen, piece of paper so you can write down which ones are correct and let's get started. Here we go.
Okay, let's go over the answers then, and I'll show you how you find these answers and why the other ones were wrong. That's all important as well. And in this one, it comes from a set of guidelines, and the guidelines establish that it is acceptable, so something that it's okay to do. So we have an upper limit, imposing an upper limit, or we have a lower limit. So there'll always be two which are kind of opposites, and then one which is a bit diff different from those. So working temperatures lower than 13 degrees if physical labour is involved or working temperatures above 16. So, so we have impose an upper limit or working temperatures above 16 or it's possible to work in temperatures lower than 13. So let's have a look, scan for these temperatures and you'll find that they're down here etc. Um, but does this help us? The minimum temperature in an indoor workplace should normally be at least 16. At least 16, okay. 13 if much of the work involves rigorous labour. So working temperatures lower than 13, no, it should be 13 as a minimum. Then they talk about practical steps, and here we go, working in hot temperatures. There's no law for maximum working temperatures, so we can delete that one. But you can work in temperatures above 16, it's possible. So by the process of elimination, we can figure out that the answer here is C, because you can work in temperatures above 16, there's no law against it, it's acceptable. You can't work anywhere under 13 because 13 should be kind of the minimum and there is no upper limit we know that's not possible so it's C. Number two this time we have a memo and what's the purpose of the memo so is it to inform remind or warn so we've got three different ideas here inform about new guidelines remind them about existing guidelines or warn them that there are some modifications which are only permitted for two weeks. So again, we have two which are opposite, so new and old or something about a warning. So we read through it and what we find is that it's here. Please remember that we are proud to be able to provide accessible workplace practices to all staff. We therefore remind you that your workplace practices need to be. So this is a kind of gist question. It's just a reminder about existing guidelines, nothing about new ones. And yes, they mentioned two weeks, but nothing that they are only permitted for two weeks. Actually, what they're talking about here is something very different instead and that you have to acknowledge requests within two weeks, not that these changes should only last two weeks. Number three, we have an extract about contact, her, contact dermatitis. And according to this extract, so what does this extract tell us? There can be two stages of contact dermatitis. Security measures can be added together to prevent so these are symptoms, this is prevention, and then contact dermatitis is easy to identify visually. So we've got two things about symptoms, these two stages, and then this visual identification, and here we have prevention. And here, signs and symptoms is the thing that we're going to be looking for, are very similar, dry, red, and itchy skin is the first sign flaking, blistering, crusting, etc. can follow this. So there are two stages. There can be two stages here. Okay, number four, we're looking at a notice here and we need to know the purpose of the notice. So again, we check through the ideas. We've got instruct, encourage or tell. Instruct staff that tight-fitting RPE should be checked by a trained advisor, assessor. So that's the main idea, or encourage staff to wear these ear loop masks in the workplace, or to tell staff that all of these ear loop masks or respirators should be returned and not used. 
Okay, so we've got checked by an assessor, wear them or return them. So kind of opposite ideas here, encourage and return or just check them. So let's have a look. We scan for these RPE. We've got RPE here to provide adequate protection. All tight fitting RPE should be fit tested by a competent assessor, by a trained assessor. So the answer is A, nothing about encouraging. In fact, they're telling them not to unless it's safely been checked. And there's nothing about returning it to the CE. They're just saying that most of these won't actually pass the test created by CE unless they have been properly supervised in their fitting. OK, number five, we have another extract from a training notice this time. And we want to know what it explains. So will the training provide specific examples of all situations when you get something like this? Don't forget, check things like all, every, none, zero, whatever it happens to be. So we've got specific examples of all situations. The training will take place over one day. So this is about time or that it will be an interactive workshop with time provided for Q&A sessions, so question and answer sessions. And the answer is right at the bottom here. There will be examples and opportunities for questions and discussions throughout the session. So it is going to be interactive. There'll be time for that. It's definitely not one day because it's two and a half days. So we can cross that out straight away. Specific examples of all situations, no, it may not be possible to cover everything. And the last one, according to the extract, a wound is at greater risk of tetanus if it's on an exposed limb, it's superficial or has been exposed to foreign substance such as soil. So we need to read through, we need to look for this greater risk and we find that in the middle here, wounds pose an increased risk. Consider wounds which are dirty if contaminated with dirt or soil. Here we go. So that's answer C. Well, I hope you found this practice session useful. If you do want to build your skills and know the techniques, why not have a look at my on-demand courses, which are all pre-recorded so you can watch them in your own time. Um, hopefully they're quite budget friendly as well and I've popped in some discount codes in the info box below for you so take a look at those. If you like this video please subscribe, give it a like and share it with friends or colleagues. It would be so nice if I could grow this channel and thank you very much for watching. If you've got questions feel free to get in touch or just say hi, pop a comment in the comments box below. Thanks for watching, take care and see you next time. Bye bye.